What's up? Chuck Pippen here. Today I'm not Chuck Pippen from Icon Boats. I'm just Chuck Pippen from Chuck Pippen Fishing. I got my new LX21 Icon boat here, which you guys have seen pretty much all over the internet. We did the official walkthrough of this boat for Icon, but today I'm gonna do a walkthrough that's not the official Icon boats walkthrough. This is a walkthrough for me. Show guys, show everybody how my boat is set up. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you all my electronics, how I operate my live well system. I'm gonna take it out and let, lake test it, which is a perfect day for lake testing because we got like 15 to 25 mile an hour winds today here in Florida. So let's get right into it. Start with the front here. My boat's not super clean, but it's not a show boat today. I'm just gonna show you what I got here. So up here on the bow, we have three Hummingbird Solix 12s. I'll show you when I get out on the lake, but I have this one just for my Mega Live Target. I got Mega Live Target right here, all rigged up. I use this one strictly here for the live view. Down here, I use this for my 360. I got Mega 360 right over here. So I always just keep that on 360. The, lo the lower left unit here, this uh, Solix 12, I have a split screen between the map and my uh, 2D sonar or down imaging if I decide to use that. Then I have it set up with a Minn Kota Ultrax 112 all set up there, all on house wiring. No need, like we, like we say in our videos, no need to run any aftermarket wiring. We got independent power all the way up there. You'll notice here also my, uh, my top unit here is a little bit off center. We have this custom Boat Logics makes this front mount here for us, for Icon. See, it says Icon right there. Anyway, Icon, this is our custom, comes with a boat. Because I have this mega live target lock here, I would have had to stand my GPS's way up. So I got in there and modified it a little bit, moved it over one and a half inches to the right. So that's my bow electronics there. Continuing with the electronics, here at the console, I have two more Solix 12s on this unit here. They're not turned on now, I'm in the parking lot. This unit here is not on my network. I have four units on my network. Uh, this one I just left off the network. Even though I have two Ethernet port um, banks there, I have one in here and one up there, I just left this one off. I use this for sign imaging and I have my um, through holes uh, transducer, the one that's glued in the hole of the boat, that, that one's hooked up here. So I use this mainly all just for depth finder type stuff. This one here, which is part of the network of these four units, which I, means I could look at the live or the 360, whatever I wanted, because it's all hooked up, all networked together. This one I mainly use for my mapping right here. So I have 2D sonar, side imaging, all that stuff over here. And then I have full 12 inch screen here of just my map of where I'm going so I don't get lost because I can't do that. And then you'll see, let's show you here in my tackle storage, what you guys have seen this tackle storage. This is how I have mine set. I got nine boxes up here. Remember it holds a total of 31 boxes. Um, I got some dip and die here, tools. I got my tools right there, but you can put more tools over here. And you can see it's kind of a mess in there because that's how I am. I got one of these little, uh, that's GoPro stuff there. Keep some line, jackets, extra stuff, a lot of CPF lure stuff in there. But up here is where I keep the nine boxes that I would typically use in a day. and other stuff I keep below in case I need to slide it forward here I'll slide it forward so slide it forward I took some of the tackle out because it's hot down here already even though it's April but I have a few more boxes down there you can put a total of 22 boxes down there upper work lights here you guys have seen that in some of the other videos it doesn't just light up it has lights in this compartment but it actually lights up these upper work lights here will light up the whole entire cockpit area so there's the, that slides back in place. Represent with 13 fishing and cut a hummingbird. And of course, uh, CPF lures in here. Like we said, you put about 40 rods in here, but I don't have 40 rods in there right now. I got about 30 or so. All 13 fishing, I strictly use 
13 fishing rods and reels because I love them. Got sleeves on there, pile a bunch more rods in there. Over on this side, I know it's not cool to use butt seats, but I use butt seats every once in a while if it's real wavy out, but I got both my butt seats in there with the pro poles, some life jackets tucked in there, that kind of stuff. In this compartment, just more, more soft plastics. You pull that out, my ethernet port's in there. I'll show you here. So I can pull this out fire extinguisher and there's that hummingbird port bank there show you guys this one more time we said this a bunch of times you don't have to run aftermarket wiring all that's right in there there's all my wiring just for the console got more wiring buses up front Keep my scale here. Nice little storage compartment. Cooler in here. I didn't get ice this morning. Cool thing about these coolers, I don't think we talked about that a lot, but they, you have the friction hinges. See that lid just, there's no shock on there. It just stays up, which is kind of cool. Put some protein bars in here. Lots of water down here in Florida. Fully insulated. This one's insulated also, which is cool. And there I have some boat paperwork, all the remotes for everything, Coast Guard captain's license, because I still do a guide trip every now and then. And here, what I got in here? Got my pump out hose and a weigh-in bag and some towels, because my boat's black and it shows every fingerprint and everything, so I'm constantly wiping it down. And you can see here I got a GoPro mounted right there, right in my light socket. And I will be putting one of those up front too. I just haven't had time. I'll mount a hold under, I'll wire it into the boat up on the bow so I can put a cam this camera pole up to the front. I like to keep it up there. Show you the back compartment here. This is pretty cool. So we got some nice sunlight today too. So when, if you guys originally saw my boat, I had Five of those big AGM Odysseys in there. I've, I've made some up, some upgrades. I don't know if it's upgrades, but I changed the batteries out. Lightened my boat up by about 175 pounds. Pro Guide batteries hooked me up with their new lighter weight, about 11 pounds lighter as far as AGMs go, each battery. They're 31 AGMs. So I have these over here in parallel for my house batteries. I have this boat rigged with eight foot Minn Kota Raptors and the four bank charger. Um, and my Raptor pumps are rather, they're big, so they're over here on this side. <clears throat> over here on this side, I got three lithiums running in series from Pro Guide batteries. Those things will last all day. But look how, you guys how, see how clean that is in there? And then my fish IV system. It's got, I don't know, about 14 ounces of G-Juice in there. That's a 64 ounce tank. I'll explain a little bit about that. There's plenty of information out there. I'll throw a link into the video we did for Icon, or I did for Icon on how to use your whole um, live bowl system, the L2 live bowl system. There's your compressor for my L2 live well system, my refrigeration that keeps those fish in this toasty hot water down here, keeps them nice and cool. Um, there will be a drop in tub that goes in here. It's still in development at the time of the filming, but there will be a drop in tub like you have on the other side. Obviously it'll be shallower, so you can use this also for storage. <clears throat> so yeah, then I have a Mercury Pro XS 250 on an Atlas jack plate because this is a 21 foot 10 boat and I have a 250 on it. Got about 25 hours on this motor now. You can see my trailer, boat's not that clean today. Not showing you guys anything new. Out here I said I had the eight foot Raptors. The Raptor brackets don't necessarily work. The Raptor brackets that are out currently don't work with the design of our hull here. So 
we mounted some talon brackets because they're basically three piece adjustable super sturdy and i got those on there got a 24 pitch fury on here i also run a 25 tempest boat rides a little higher with that 18 inch wheels why did i choose the 18 inch wheels over the 14 inch wheels um, just because they look cool that's the only reason because i'm 46 years old and i want to look cool to my kids icon logo you can see how dirty this is i should have cleaned this up a little bit but that all lights up when it's dark out runway lights which is super cool when you put the boat in the water if your lights are on it just lights up the whole inner side of the trailer gives you a nice guide there so that's how my boat's all set up we should probably take it out on the lake should be nice and choppy out there today and uh show you guys how that works so i'm out on the water um, perfect day for lake testing seeing what the boat will do i'm about to head through a canal here and come out into some open water about three miles of open water we got a little like a i don't know it's just blowing hard but what i did forget to mention is my boat has the new mercury dts control so i have i got a hot foot down there but it's no no throttle cables it's electronic and i have the new dts hand throttle right when you start this boat or right when you give this boat power first thing in the morning it's on hand throttle so you just have to turn that off once and then you got foot throttle the rest of the day so cell phone charger down there all that stuff we're gonna go see what this boat does in some waves 2d sonar side imaging going through a canal all mapping over here So, tournament loaded, 24 Fury. I'm not gonna have time to touch my 25 Tempest today. It's, it's a little bit more of a prop. Um, these boats fly out of the hole for such a big boat. They fly out of the hole for any kind of bass boat. I'm just saying that because they do. And uh, 24 Fury, 69.3, kind of cutting across the wind, one foot chop, a real one foot chop, like 12 inches, not a, It'd be a bass fisherman's two foot chop or three footers. I'd hear some people say that, but it was a one foot chop. It is blowing 20 ish today. Um, and then 66 miles an hour straight into that wind. 66. That wind has a lot to do with all three units I have up front, but that wind is a, for you guys that only run like one flush mounted unit, you'll notice when you start putting more units there and you have to stand them up a little bit that's gonna slow you down. And I have three up there, which is like a big sail right in the front of my boat. And still got 66, straight into the wind, tournament loaded, all the tackle, 
35 gallons of gas when I started. Still got 32 gallons of gas and 24 Fury. But one thing that's pretty cool about these boats, I'm gonna show you here, just on a dead stop, see if I can show you that you just don't get any backwash. I'm just gonna run here real quick and I'm gonna just completely remove my foot from the throttle and see how much backwash we can get over the back of the boat. That was just dead stop. Just took my foot off the throttle. We got about 45 miles an hour real quick. A couple little splashes. No waves over the back of your boat. How this hole was designed. Run 69 in a calm day. 69 when it's 80 miles an hour. Or, I'm sorry, when it's 80 degrees out. One foot chop. Comes out of the hole quick, super quick. Since we're out here, I'm going to go ahead and show you what my live well settings are. They're going to be different depending on the weather you're in, whether it's hot or cold, where you're fishing. But I'm going to show you, I have the L2 live well system with the chiller plate, which has a compressor. I have dual house batteries and I have the, the full L2 live well system with the uh, fish IV system. So screen kind of glare out here. We got about to rain here, but I'm going to show you what I have my settings at. So, right here, right, right there, live well's off. I'm just gonna turn on auto. It says ensure your live well drains closed. It is, it's gonna start filling my live well here. I did a whole how-to video on this. If you wanna see that, I'll put a link in the description, but that's on Icon's channel. It's filling my pumps right now, so that's not important. I'm gonna show you what my actual settings are. So I'm gonna go into here, my fish IV system. I have it set to when if I just turn on auto, it's gonna spray or automatically inject three quarters of an ounce of, I have G-Juice in there on a timer, three quarters of an ounce every 90 minutes. It also initially will squirt three or spray three, ounce, three quarters of an ounce in there right when it's completely full. The chiller plate, I have it set at 80 which that's from the other day. Water's a little cooler today, so I'd wanna knock that down to like 77, because you can see here, the water temperature today is 77 degrees. I'm not interested in freezing those fish out. I would just want the, the live well to stay the same temperature as what I'm catching the fish out of. So then you go into auto, I got, see this fill pump max boat speed. So if I'm filling my live wells and I take off, I have my, you can adjust this. I have mine set at seven miles an hour. You don't want your pumps to run dry. So as soon as I take off and I'm going seven miles an hour or faster, the fill pumps are gonna shut themselves off until I slow back down, then they'll turn themselves back on. The float watch duration, I have that five seconds. So if my live wells go below the full mark for more than five seconds, that'll turn the fill pump back on. I have auto chill turned on, auto fish IV turned on, auto recirculate, all that stuff. Um, I have everything on. The recirculate on duration. 
see, see the three and the 12, the off duration. So every 12 minutes, once that live well is full, it's gonna turn on for three minutes and recirculate the water that's in there. It'll pump new water in whenever it needs to, but it will recirculate the water for three minutes and then turn off for 12 minutes. If it was hot, I'd go, like, I'd change all that. If I had 25, 30 pounds in the live well, I might just go over to manual and just leave it on. But that's how I have my settings right there. And again, it's gonna be set to wherever you're fishing, the weather for the day. Like you saw, I had that set at 80, but today the water temperature is 77, and it's currently 76 degrees inside my live well. So if I just turn on auto right there, it's not gonna turn the chiller on because it's 76 in my live well, and I have it set at 77. So there's no need for the chiller plate to come on. Now, if the, lot, if the water got hot, once it's elevated above the water column, if the water, the sun beating down on the deck started heating up, that water in there and it got over the 77 degrees, it would turn itself on because it's automatic. I could go back to fishing, battling this 20 mile an hour wind we have today. So anyway, that's my live well settings. And that's how I have my boat set up. So there's the unofficial walkthrough of my LX21 Icon. Showed you how it ran, just did some 360s, 69 miles an hour. 69.3 uh, lots of stuff in this boat way overloaded and if you guys want to see some more stuff like how i have my hummingbird set up i'll do that in more videos like uh my settings for my live my mega live uh, target lock my mega 360 all that kind of stuff how i use it how i use the x the the steering of it and how I use the whole one boat network. If you want some more videos on that, just leave that stuff in your comments. If you have any more questions about this boat, our website's live for Icon Boats, iconboats.com, I-K-O-N boats.com. We got dealer locator on there. Uh, if you wanna find out how much one of these boats actually costs, not all the rumors on the internet, call a dealer. They have boats in stock and ask them build out a boat and ask them what they'll sell it to you for. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Chuck Pippen, Chuck Pippen Fishing and Icon Boats, and we'll see you next time.